Uh, and just to give you some heads up on what's going on, um, so the choir is singing, and um, so and then tomorrow the youth are um, are going skiing, so we're going snow skiing. So y'all pray for Brother Danny; I don't break something. <clears throat> it's but we're gonna have a lot of fun. If you know if someone would like to go to that, uh, and they just haven't, you know, maybe they're on the off the radar, you come see me. We do have extra tickets. Uh, we bought them last year, and then it got hot, like it does in Kentucky. And then it snowed us out. Can you get snowed out of skiing? When they shut down I-65, you don't have a choice. You can't go. So we didn't go last year, and we have to use these tickets this year. So if you know if someone would like to go, please let me know. We would love to have them. We're leaving tomorrow, parents, at 8 o'clock. And the kids all grown. <clears throat> right? 8 o'clock. Well, they used to go to school that time. So 8 o'clock tomorrow, we'll leave here. And we'll get back Tuesday around 2-ish, 12 to 2, in that ballpark. So that's, that's what I've got going. Uh, and today, I'm celebrating my lovely bride's birthday. You'll wish her happy birthday. I know we have several others. Wayne, right? Where are you at, Wayne? Wayne, birthday. We've got an anniversary, anniversary. <coughs> and uh, several other people that uh, have some, some precious things going on. Uh, also, this Wednesday night, there will not be a wana. There will not be a wana, and there will not be a meal. So just kind of keep that in mind. And next Sunday, since next Sunday is Christmas, if you haven't done your Christmas shopping, get on it. Next Sunday, next Sunday is Christmas, and we will not have Sunday school, right? We'll just meet in here uh, at 1030 and have our services here. And the preacher said it's going to keep it short. <laughs> I tried, y'all. I tried. I tried. No. But we are so glad you're here. We have several new faces here. We are glad you were here. Welcome to Pleasant Hill, the most generous and kind church I've, I've been a part of in so long. Y'all are so good to me and my family. And there's just some precious people here. If you don't know that, stick around and you'll find out. There's some precious people here. So we're going to open with a word of prayer and thank God and invite Him. To come be a part of this, because I know it looks like we're performing to you. The reality is, we're performing to him. Amen. And, 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 and I love that he's not a performance-driven God. He's just smiling. Have you ever walked in on a room and your, one of your kids or grandkids just singing away? He's just like, i got to get my camera. You know, but I feel like God, if, if God had a camera, he'd videotape you today. He's just excited that you're here. That we are gathered together to worship him. And we're just going to sing praise. Y'all just going to kind of enjoy it. If you want to sing along, by all means, jump in here. Some of these songs will sound familiar. But uh, we just want to thank you for being here. Let's pray. Father God, you are so good. You are so good to us. We just want to stop and say thank you. Father, thank you. You didn't have to step out of, out of heaven onto this mud ball of earth. Into the arms of a teenage mother. And the spouse, the husband that was going to divorce her before it even got started. Into a manger fulfilled with all the things a manger has. Chased by Herod. All the, the drama that went on in that. But I love, I love, I love that Mary chose to cherish. In the crazy, in the drama, in the hard moment. She chose to cherish and to ponder those things. Not to look at all the circumstances around her, but chose to, to cherish the presence of God in her arms and in her life. And Father, as we go into our families and all that means, as we go into a new season where it looks a little different from last year, and we can be distracted by the hardships of, of life, Father, may we be caught up in your presence, in your goodness. May we choose to cherish, even when it's hard, especially when it's hard, because you, God, are worthy of our praise. We pray that you smile this morning, not because we sing good or we look good, but because we want to give you honor and glory for who you are. Father, we love you, and we thank you for what you're going to do here today. In your most holy and precious name, all God's children said, Amen. 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 Stand with me this morning uh, before the choir sings. We're going to open with a uh, Christmas carol to get into the spirit of worshiping on Christmas. Uh, and as we sing and as the choir sings this morning, I just want us to remember that Jesus isn't just part of the Christmas story, but Christmas is part of the Jesus story. So let's sing to him this morning.
joy to the earth the Savior meant. Let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow, far as the curse is found, far as the curse is found, far as, far as the curse is found. Amen. You can be seated. Good morning. Welcome this morning. The choir is fixing to bless us here in just a moment. A couple of brief things. Don't forget your next steps card. There's one in the bulletin. There's some at the back drop box or in the welcome center uh, at the end of the service. If you want to indicate next steps, how we can help you in your walk with God, please fill that out. And we'd love to have a conversation with you. Anyway, it's a blessing to be here today. I thought we was going to have a little preview of a white Christmas this morning. Did you see the little spits, uh, spits of snow on the way? So excited about that. Um, today, without any further ado, the choir is going to lead us in a musical presentation called I Call Him Lord. So let's pray and then we'll get started. Father, we come before you this morning. Thank you for this time that we can come and worship together. Lord, may you get all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen.
we gather in this place to sing and rejoice, for God's gift has come. He is our Emmanuel and the Savior of our hearts. We remember that starry night when our God became flesh and dwelt among us. We celebrate that holy night when the voice of Almighty God was heard in the frail cries of a baby, and the world witnessed a spark that would blaze into the greatest act of love ever known. And we long once again to come and adore Him. For thousands of years, God's people had waited for the Messiah. For 400 years, God's people longed to hear the voice of their God. And then everything changed on that first Christmas day when Jesus seeing the star in the east, the wise men rejoiced and traveled a great distance to worship Jesus. 
The shepherds were astonished and terrified by the sight of the angelic host. They too journeyed to bow before him. After seeing the Christ in the temple, Simeon was overwhelmed with, with praise at the sight of the Messiah. As we pause to remember, our hearts are also overwhelmed by this baby because he is the one the world was waiting for. He is our Emmanuel. He is the Savior and Lord of the world. We believe what the prophet Isaiah declared so long ago. A child will be born for us. A son will be given to us. And the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The dominion will be vast and its prosperity will never end. He will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now on and forever. Forever. 
In the small town of Nazareth, the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and told her she would give birth to a son and name him Jesus. In a dream, an angel told Joseph, Mary's betrothed, he should not be afraid to take Mary as his wife and to name the child Jesus. As they each heard this, Mary and Joseph knew this name was unlike any other. Jesus, the name that would cast out fear, cause demons to tremble and bring salvation to anyone who would call upon it. The name that would be worshipped for all eternity. Jesus, the Son of God whose name is worthy because he humbled himself, became a man, lived a sinless life, and was obedient unto death. Jesus, the name that is above every name, which at every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord.
In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. So everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him tightly in cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. This babe, whose name had all authority and majesty, was born in the lowliest of places. He was the very word who spoke the galaxies into existence and created all things. He was holding all things together even while Mary was tenderly holding him. He was the Savior who would later promise to prepare a place in heaven for all who would believe in him. And yet, on the night of his birth, there was no room for him. Can you sense the divine irony of this moment? Most everyone in Bethlehem missed the wondrous miracle that took place in that humble stable. While their physical bodies were so close, their hearts were so far. Today, as we are not all that different from those in Bethlehem that night. Christ is here, right in our midst, and He is looking for a place, for a heart, that He might love and fill with new life once again. Thou didst leave Thy throne and Thy King crown when thou camest to earth for me but in Bethlehem's home was there found no room for thy holy nativity oh come Yeah. 
Jesus left his throne of highest glory to be with us and to become one of us. Though his rightful place was one of wonder and majesty, he humbled himself and came as a meek and precious child. We celebrate Christmas because of what this day brought to a hurting and hopeless world. Hope, healing, peace, love, joy, and salvation were born to us that day. Jesus is the complete fulfillment of every divine promise and the answer to every longing heart. May our response to him be just like those who came to bow down and worship him. May we surrender our past, present, and future to the sovereign end of Jesus, our Lord. Master, Redeemer, Savior, Really? 
Amen. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, choir. If a pastor's not ready to preach after that, I don't know who is. Amen. Have your Bibles turn, if you will, to Luke chapter 2 for just a moment. And I want to continue our series, The Signs of Christmas. We're going to talk about the shepherds today. I might get a little excited, so y'all listen fast and I'll preach fast. How's that? But in Luke chapter 2 is where we're going to be. You know, God loves shepherds. If you think about it, the biblical history, the first family, Adam and Eve, had Cain and Abel. Abel was a shepherd, a tender of the flock and the herd. Moses, the man of God, he was a shepherd. Then you had David, the shepherd boy who was anointed to be the next king of Israel, a man after God's own heart. And then you have all those prophets in the Bible, and one of them, uh, the name of Amos, he was a shepherd. And then, of course, in the book of Psalms, the largest book in the Old Testament, Psalm 23, God calls himself a shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, said David. And so it's no surprise when you think about it that God would invite, of all people, shepherds to be the first witnesses of the birth of Christ. In Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, it says, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. This first registration took place with Quirinius uh, when he was governing Syria. So everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him tightly in cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them." In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel of the Lord said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people today in the city of David was born for you, who is Messiah the Lord, a Savior, a Savior. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. What an amazing encounter. And an angel and then an angelic host gives shepherds a glimpse of what God's doing in the world. The audience for this special announcement was the shepherds that were outside of Bethlehem that night tending their flocks. And the announcement, let's read that again, verse 10 through 12. Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the city of David, a Savior was born for you who is Messiah the Lord. And then he backs, they, he backs it up and says, here's the sign. You'll find a baby uh, in, uh, wrapped in a linen cloth lying in a manger. So, and that's exactly what they do. What I want to, you to see today is simply two things. The significance of the birth announcements of Christ to these shepherds. There's two things I want you to see today. Number one, that it's good news for all people. Uh, Good news for all people. Notice he says, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. This truly is for every single one of us, all of us. Jesus' story includes the Christmas story, and it is for all of us. Mark 1, when he began his gospel, he said, The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Gospel means good news. What's the good news about Jesus? He's the Son of God. When you realize who he is, when you realize why he came, when you realize what he's done for all of us, it is good news of great joy. Paul the Apostle wrote in Romans 1, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. That's good news, okay? I'm not ashamed of the good news of Christ. Why? Because it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew 
and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is real, revealed from faith to faith, just as it's written, the righteous will live by faith. So Paul is saying, I'm not ashamed of this good news. Why? Because it's changed my life. It saved me from a, a life of sin and, and death and hell. And so I am not ashamed of the good news because it's the power of God to those who believe. Okay, And we'll talk about that here in just a moment, how it's important for you and I to believe the good news in order to be changed. Now, what I want you to realize is this first uh, important truth is the, the, the uh, significance of the birth of Jesus Christ. It is good news for all people. And, and my challenge to you is during this Christmas season that you will share that good news with others, with your family, with your friends, with your neighbors. You know, uh, before you backpedal on me and go, well, I don't know if I'm very good at that. Can I tell you something? When's the last time you, you tried something you really like and you asked somebody about that recipe? Okay. When's the last time you, you, you uh, saw your friend and they, they got a good deal on something and you say, hey, where'd you get that? See, the thing is, we like to share good news. When we find something good, we'd like to share it with somebody else. But what I want to tell you is this is the best thing of all. Good news of great joy for all people, salvation through Christ, uh, how he's the son of God. He came uh, from heaven to earth. He lived and walked among us. He lived a sinless life and he died a criminal's death. He took our place on that cross. He took upon himself the things that you and I deserve. And now he says, look. I have risen from the dead, I have proven that I am the Son of God, and I've got good news of great joy. That is the first thing, good news for all people. What about the second thing I want you to see today? And that is this, a Savior was born for you. Now see, it's important for him to say that, you know, the significance of the birth of Christ, it is good news for all people. But there just might be some of you this morning go, well, that's great, I, I appreciate that, but... You just don't know where I've been. You, you, you don't know what I've done. And so we follow it up with a more personal appeal. He is the Savior and he was born for you. For all of you. In Luke 2, 11, Today in the city of David, a Savior was born for you who is Messiah the Lord. Now why is this important? Because in Matthew's Gospel... It says that um, Joseph, when the angel came to him, after he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. He is the Savior of the world, and He will save you and I from our sins. He will save us from the wrath to come. He will save us uh, from the judgment that you and I deserve because we've sinned against the Holy God. And so He truly is the Savior in every sense of the word. Uh, John the Apostle, when he wrote uh, his letter, 1 John the Epistle, he said, And we have seen and we testify that the Father has sent His Son as the world's Savior. The same guy who wrote John 3, 16 said, Look, we've seen, we testify, God sent His Son as the world's Savior. He died for everybody. And He's saying, I want you to come before it's too late. I want you to come just as you are right now. Paul, the apostle, a seasoned man of God who devoted his entire life to Christ and served a, 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 you know, in ministry to the Lord. He, uh, he mentored a young man named Timothy and he wrote a letter to him. And in 1 Timothy 4.10, he says, For this reason we labor and strive. In other words, why do we do what we do? For this reason we labor and strive because we have put our hope in the living God 
okay, and the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Now, Paul is saying, look, I don't serve a dead God, I serve a living God. Because Jesus, even though he died on that cross, on the third day, what did he do? He rose again. I serve a living God. And because I serve a living God, who raised his son from the dead, and he ascended to heaven, uh, and now he's seated, seated at the right hand of God, now I realize he is the living God. He's the Savior of all people. That's why it's good news and great joy for all people. And he especially of those who believe. Remember when I said just a few moments ago that we're going to talk about that faith part. Yes, Jesus died. He died for all of you. And that Savior was born for you and you and you and you and you and you. you. He's given us the greatest gift that's ever been given. He gave his life. And it's available to every single one of you. But it's not going to happen until you receive it. Have you ever ever seen someone bring a Christmas present and it's got your name on it? It's your gift. It's your present. It's got your name on it. But it's not really yours until you receive it and open it up and claim it as your own. God loves you. He sent his son to die on the cross for you. And he's saying, I've got good news. It's for everybody, even you. But you've got to be willing to believe and receive. Is it that simple? Yeah, it is. It's it's easy to understand. Sometimes it's hard to do. Pride gets in the way. Oh, surely it can't be that simple. You know, or surely God couldn't forgive someone like me. Surely, surely not. Well, I have to, I have to tell you one verse that I skipped, and that's in John chapter four. In John chapter four is the story about Jesus going to a Samaritan town and encountering the Samaritan woman. And she had lived her life in a way that she was ashamed of some things she had done. She had had many marriages, many failed marriages, and now she went to town in the middle of the day to get water from the well. Now, if you knew the culture and you knew the customs, you would know that's odd. Because in the Middle East, in a desert, if you're going to get water, you go early in the morning or late in the evening when it's cool. You don't go in the middle of the day unless you're just trying to get something that you need and avoid everybody. And that's exactly what she did. She went in the middle of the day because she knew that chances are wouldn't be anybody around. She didn't want the stares. She didn't want the glares. She didn't want to hear the whispers. And she showed up one day to that well. It was known, uh, it was in a town called Shikar. And and the well was Jacob's well. She was proud of her heritage. She was proud of the family reputation. And she met a man named Jesus. And I'll spare you the conversation. You can read it in chapter 4. But when it was all said and done, this woman was so amazed at her encounter with Christ that she left her bucket. And if there was any water in it, I don't know. But she left her bucket. And this woman that had spent her life being ashamed and avoiding people all of a sudden runs to town. And she says, come meet a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? Could this be the Christ? And you know what? These town people in Shikar, they knew her. They knew what kind of woman she was. And for her to scream and shout and wave and get their attention, we got to check this out. And all of a sudden, everybody in this town goes to this well and meets this man named Jesus. And when it's all said and done, here's what the townspeople of Shekar say in John 4, 42. They told the woman, we no longer believe because of what she said, since we have heard for ourselves and know that this really is the Savior of the world. Amen? In other words, it's good news for everybody, okay? Here is a Savior that is born even for you and you and you and you and you and you. So today I want to encourage you as you think about Christmas. 
as we sing, as we praise, as we think about the Christmas story, I want you to remember two things about the birth of Jesus Christ. I want you to remember that it's good news for all people. And I want you to realize that that Savior was born for you. Every single one of you. And we have the shepherds in Bethlehem that heard the announcement from heaven that it's for everybody and that Savior was born for you. And then as Jesus grew up and he ministered, he went to a town in Samaria. See, it would be great for Israel to rejoice because they were expecting that Messiah. And so in Bethlehem, sure. In Jerusalem, absolutely. Man, that, that's, that's got to be that way, right? It's, it's perfect. That's the way it should be. But in Jesus' earthly ministry, he went out of his way to a small town, Shekar, at Jacob's Web in Samaria. You remember, Jacob was their ancestor who had an encounter with God, and his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. Symbolism there. What's the message? The message is this. He came for everybody. And he wants you to know he's not leaving anybody out. He loves you. He sent his son to die on the cross for you. A Savior was born for you. You have an opportunity here in just a moment to receive the greatest Christmas present that's ever been given, and that is Jesus Christ. He came from heaven. He lived on earth. He lived a sinless life, okay? He died a criminal's death, and you know what? He took our place on that cross. He lived the life that you and I should have lived. He died the death that you and I deserve, and on the third day, he rose from from the grave and he proves that he is the son of God and now forgiveness of sins is offered through his name and so I want to announce this good news to you today is that it is good news of great joy for all people that you can leave your life of sin just like that woman at the well did you can meet Christ a man who knows everything you've ever done and you can come to the foot of a bloodstained cross and you can confess him as Lord, and you can be saved. And when he saves you, you'll never be the same. It'll be the best decision you ever made, and it'll be the best Christmas present you've ever received. That Savior was born for you. God wants to give you the gift of eternal life. He's put your name on it. Are you willing to humbly come to him? And receive that grace of God. Let's not make it any more complicated than it should be. God loves you. He sent his son to die on the cross for you. And now he offers this gift to you. Will you humbly come to him. And receive him as Lord. It's my prayer. That all of us will do that. Before it's everlasting too late. Won't you stand for a moment. Musicians, if you would come, we're going to have an invitation. And this is your time to respond to God. And it's my prayer today. You know, Romans 10 says that if you confess with your mouth, if you believe in your heart that uh, God raised Jesus from the dead, that you will be saved. That's scripture. That's what the Bible says. And then a few verses later, it says, whoever uh, calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. If you believe that God loves you, that he sent his son to die on the cross for you, that he rose from the dead proving he is the son of God, won't you call on his name and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know you alone are the Savior. I want to ask you to come into my life, save me, and I want to trust and follow you. You know, take that heart attitude. It's not the magic bullet of words. But when you apologize to someone, it comes from the heart and you tell the truth. You need to cry out to God. Let it come from your heart and tell him the truth and receive him today. As we prepare to sing, if you want to fill out your next steps card and let us know what God's doing in your life, drop it off when the ushers come. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Let's pray and then we'll sing. Father, we come before you right now. Thank you for this time. 
to come together to worship you. Thank you for the choir. Thank you for the wonderful job they did today, Lord, and, and uh, telling the story and singing the songs. Father, thank you for your word, Lord, that we've got good news, a great joy for all people, that a Savior has been born for each one of us. Father, we thank you for that. Father, have your will and your way in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. I've been held by the Savior I've felt far from above I've been down to the river I ain't the same A prodigal return Oh my been washed by the blood I'm no stranger to prison I've worn shackles and chains but I've been freed and forgiven and I'm not going back I'll never be the same that's why I see Oh, my hope is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday's gone. Oh, my sins are forgiven. I've been washed by the blood. Sing that one more time. Oh, I've been washed by the blood. And let's give God praise this morning. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Lori. Thank you, choir. Didn't they do a good job today? Amen. Don't forget, uh, next Sunday is Christmas Day Sunday. Uh, Lord willing, we'll be here. I know there's some mean weather coming down the pike. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, no Sunday school next Sunday. Service, same time, same place, 1030 right here next Sunday, okay? Uh, hope you have a wonderful Christmas with your families. And uh, make sure you share that good news of great joy for all people. Amen? Amen. You got something, brother? Just real quick. Um... My apologies to parents with little kids today. I missed that pitch. I think we stopped singing. And everybody looked at me. I'm like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so just so you know, next Sunday, we'll have children's church. And I'm doing it. It's your presence to you. You, you can there sit. You sit. You can come Sunday morning just for an hour. And, and I will take your children upstairs. And we'll have a big old time. And you can sit still and not worry about them. They did great, by the way. I've been the pastor up there that was worried about uh, people, honestly, usually we worry more about the parents because yeah. it doesn't bother me. I can crank up the volume, kind of preach over. It doesn't bother me, but I know I'm, I've been that parent that goes, oh, no, oh, no. No, no, no. We, we are glad you are here. We love to hear the sound of babies. Amen? Amen. 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 If you didn't amen, you should amen. amen. But, uh, yeah, be, so, so next Sunday there will be, it'll be a nursery and a uh, children's church uh, just, just to let you know on that. So thank amen. you. Amen. All right. Thank you, brethren. All right, so again, hope you have a great week. We'll be here Wednesday night, no meal, and we're good. All right. Devin, would you, I know you got a mic there. Would you dismiss us in prayer, please, brother?